Hello, welcome back to the Groove Agent 5 tutorial series. Today we're carrying on our conversation about envelopes and to be absolutely honest with you, a lot of stuff starts coming together today that we've dealt with in previous episodes but kind of scratched the surface or glossed over. And the reason for that is because we had to look at the sample page to see how the sampler works. We had to look at an overview of the envelope page because it's so complex. That's an entire conversation in its own right. But only when we start to bring envelopes and samples together and truly deal with them at the same time, do we really start to get an understanding of how some of these functions work. That's what we're going to do today. And I'm going to use the amplitude page, the amp tab, uh, which is basically all about controlling volume over time. And we're going to see how this relates with the settings in the sample page. Here we have a crash sound. I'm going to hit the key and then let go. So it doesn't matter what I do, how long I hold that key down, it's always going to sound the same. I can press the key and hold it down. It makes absolutely no odds at all. It's a one hit, a one shot hit. The reason for that is because when we look at the sample page, it's in one shot mode. And you can see it's a really long sample with a massive tail. It's still playing, you know, just going quieter and quieter, but it's a very long sample. So that's the sampler's view of the world. It's going to play this sample and then just let it run for as long as it wants. However, the amp tab has something to say about it. The amp envelope um, has something to say about it. Now, when we're in sustain mode, it kind of keeps itself out of the way. This is the minimal impact that the amp tab can have on the sample player, but it still does have potential to have an impact. If I start messing around with this envelope a little bit, so what I've done here is created an envelope with a really sharp dip, pretty fast, uh, half a second to get to the low point and then another half second to get back up to the sustain point. Let's see what happens when we play the key now. So we get the volume dip over the course of the sample being played. I'll take it right down to the very bottom to, to make it as stark as we can. Sample's still doing its thing, still playing in the background perfectly happily, but now the amp envelope is overlaying its volume template over the top of that one shot hit. Notice that nothing that we do generates a release phase. When the sample player is in one shot mode and we're in sustain mode for the amp, amp tab, we don't have a release phase. In fact, the, there is a, a release line here, but it's this kind of dark blue color. It doesn't have any effect on the sound. We stick at the sustain point long after I've let go of the key and it will stay there until the samples finish playing. Let's go back over to the sample page and instead of having a one shot sample, let's put it in no loop mode. Now the full features of the amp tab become active. And what this means is as long as we press, as long as we have the key held down, the amp envelope is going to do its thing. And as soon as we release the key, we're going to get something in the release phase. Let's see. Firstly, I'll press the key really lightly. So we got a little bit of the way through the amp envelope. I'll make this a bit longer so it's a bit easier to see. As soon as I let go of the key, it jumped to the sustain point and entered the release phase. Let's make the release phase a little bit longer so it's easier to hear. And try that again. Back over on the sample page, let's see what's going on with this play line. Now, instead of being a one shot effect, I'm playing right to the end of the sample. Now, as long as the envelope's active, as long as the amp envelope is doing something, we're in the release phase and we've got that slow release, the sample carries on playing. It has to, because the amp envelope is demanding access to the sound for that period of time while it plays it quieter and quieter and quieter. So we see that visually with the play line um, scrolling across the screen. Now I'll press the key and hold it down. It 
it is still fading out the sample's really really long and that's how far it got before the envelope died so you see you can't make simple assumptions about who's in charge here it's a true partnership between the sample page and the um, AMP tab, depending on what settings you've got set. Let's take it to the next level. We'll bring a loop into the equation. So now I need to set some loop points. And I'm also going to bring my sample end much closer. First things first, I'll press a key while we're looking at this screen. Let's see what happens. I'm going to hold the key down. Now we can switch across to the, the AMP page. We're stuck on the sustain point. Now, when we're in continuous mode, when I let the key go, we'll enter the release phase and we're going to carry on cycling around the loop. That's the difference between continuous and until release. I'll do exactly the same thing but this time, once I let the key go, I'm going to break out of the loop and carry on playing the tail of the sample. Okay. That's the first proper real demonstration we've had of that functionality, and they are both genuinely useful in different circumstances. Now I'm going to edit these settings a little by bringing the sample end and the two loop points a little bit further out. So we've got more of a lead in time. This takes about, what, maybe one, one and a half seconds to get to the loop point. And then we enter a quieter loop phase. And now I can properly demonstrate sample loop. There's actually a non-existent attack phase here. This first line is our attack phase, so we're gonna get the sound immediately. It'll jump straight to the sustain point, and it'll stay there until the sample reaches its loop point. So all of this is basically protected space. The envelope won't have any effect on it. As soon as we reach the loop point, you'll see the envelope trigger, and there'll be the big volume dip, and then it'll hold at the sustain point again, while the sample enters its loop. It's crazy stuff. There we go. Jump straight to the sustain point, come back, do the volume dip, hold at the sustain point. Now the sample's looping round. And from this point onwards, it's just like the sustain envelope. Let go, enter the release phase, sound fades away. Of course, we're not close done with the insanity yet, because now the amp tab can introduce its own loop into the situation. Okay, this is the pattern I've drawn. So, this is our loop zone. Pick the green line up. Specify the number of nodes around which the amp loop is going to um, cycle. So this is, a, this is a volume loop. This loop over here is a sample-based loop. This is the part of the sample that's going to be repeated over and over again. Let's see what happens when those two things get involved with each other. So there's the big volume dip. And in the background, the sample is doing its thing. As soon as I let go of the key, we jump to the sustain point, enter the release phase. Obviously, we could have the release phase as complex as we want. I've left it simple because there's, there's, there's no need for extra complexity here. We've got enough you know, just, just straight out of the box. And finally, in one shot mode, we lose all control over the envelope. We've drawn an envelope, but it's going to describe exactly that path every time I hit a key. I'm gonna hit the key and then just let go. Now then, it disappeared before it got to the end of the envelope because once the sample's done, there is no more to be had. There's no more sound to be had. The envelope has nothing to do. So let's do that again from the sample page's perspective. And that's when it stops. When it reaches the sample end and the envelope, the envelope's got no more sound to play with, it stops. If I put both pages in one shot mode, we'll get all the way to the end of the sample or the envelope, whichever comes first. 
I'm going to make the sample nice and long again. So we've got plenty of real estate as far as the sound is concerned. Let's see what happens. And this is how far we got along the playback of the sample before the envelope ran out of gas. If I bring the sample end in, then that will be where everything stops. And once again, we'll see the envelope come to a crashing, st crashing stop. There. At the bottom of the AMP page, we've got some uh, controls that allow us to apply master settings to the, um, to the volume envelope. No overall volume, we don't need to talk about that, it's so obvious. And pan, it's pretty obvious as well. These four auxiliary sends are interesting. And you can see everything that we just did then had a little bit of reverb on it because auxiliary one here, I didn't really want to talk about output buses uh, until we deal with it as an individual topic. But because these auxiliary sends are here, we'll nip very quickly over to the mixer and on the aux tab, the auxiliary tab, you can see that we've got uh, an output to a, a reverb here. And that's why you're hearing that little bit of reverb. If I crank that up, we've got a much big, you know, much bigger like sweeping reverb. Here's our master output that I'm still stoically refusing to talk about, but it's going to bus four. We've already dealt with these settings over here, but this uh, little button down here can really catch you out if you're not careful. This is a, a norm, it says use normalized velocity. If you press this button, if you turn this button on at the wrong time, you're gonna get very unwanted results because what it does is if you have a, an instrument with multiple samples, those samples are gonna be intrinsically velocity layered. They're designed to be played that way. If you've got four samples from quietest up to loud, then they've been input into Groove Agent. They've been designed to be played that way so that when you play them quietly, they play quietly, they play properly at the right volume. So you leave that button alone. I'm gonna demonstrate this with a sound that does have uh, multiple layering. So I've loaded a kit up that's got this djembe sound that has lots of different layered, velocity layered samples but we're just gonna pick on two of them. This djembe hit here runs from 35 to 49 MIDI input values, and the next one along 50 to 66. Uh, I've created a loop in Cubase that's gonna basically demonstrate this effect for us. So all of these notes are at velocity 49, and all of these notes are at velocity 50. And here you can see the velocity bars underneath. It sounds absolutely fine. That's how you would expect it to sound. I'm gonna set velocity level to 100%. 100% on just I'll stop this for a moment. I've not actually discussed this specifically. 100% for this velocity level knob is standard. That's what maps your keyboard exactly how you would expect. So that you, if you press a key as quietly as it can possibly be played, you'll hear the sound as quietly as it can possibly be played. And at 127, it will be as loud as it can be. That velocity range is set with this value here. If you have a velocity level of zero, it means you've taken away velocity sensitivity from your keyboard. So it's really important to bear is a 100% based system. Very often these knobs are set to naught and you don't mess with them until you want an effect. With this control here, if you want velocity sensitivity, set it to 100. Let's get the loop going again. Now watch what happens when I click this normalize button. going on there is that the first sample is now being played as loud as it can possibly be played and the second sample is being played as quietly as it can possibly be played. It's reset the normalization ranges for each of those velocity zones. So if you have a sound that is already mapped 
is already designed to be played naturally on the keyboard with the settings that you have. Don't press this normalize button because it will basically reset every single one of those velocity ranges. You turn this button on if the samples that you've recorded haven't already been normalized and everything inside these presets has been specifically tailored to be at the appropriate level for the velocity of key you're playing. If in doubt, don't turn it on. <laughs> be my guest to, to have a play with it to see what effects you can get. But when you start messing with velocity levels and basically changing the velocity sensitivity slope of your keyboard, then you need to be aware how that's going to impact the relative volumes of all of the samples inside your multi-layered instrument pad. So it's a, it's a, a bigger subject really than we can cover in a single um, video, but hopefully I've illustrated the importance to not turn it on just thinking, oh, a, a global normalized function, excellent, I'll engage that. That's not what it's there for. So that's it for the amp tab. I uh, hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please consider subscribing, hit notifications, then you'll find out when the next episode comes out. Hope to see you then. Thanks a lot.